From the end of last school year to the beginning of this school year, PCH teachers have been teaching virtually. It wasn't until the end of 2020 when PCH teachers transitioned to teaching in person at school. Now teaching students, some in person and some online still, engineering teacher, Mr. Panett, business and technology teacher, Ms. Windell, government teacher, Mr. Meyer, and English teacher, Mr. Schaefer, discussed their experiences with virtual learning. Yeah, I think there were a few positives. Uh, I think there was a lot more negatives, but you know, most of my classes are hands-on classes. As a district, you know, the people that teach the same thing I teach, we had to come together and basically create a whole new curriculum. And we had to uh, learn a lot of new technology that we haven't used in the past. Yeah, I think one of the positives of online teaching and for students as well is just that we got to be home and do things a little differently, which we've never done before. So, you know, it was nice, like a lot of students got to sleep in and we didn't and teachers didn't have to drive to school, uh, you know, for a while unless they wanted to. So I think that was a positive. Another positive for me was just that curious how like a class would come together, like would there be a sense of community? And there really was. I found like even though we were online, we were still able to build that class community, that class culture, and so that, that was a definite positive for me. It made the entire school day, work day, as efficient as it can possibly be. We cut down on commutes, we cut down on passing periods. Um, everything seemed to happen in the least number of minutes possible, leading to kind of the most efficient learning environment possible. I think one of the benefits was that we knew this was a safe option. We knew this was something that prioritized uh, student self, prioritized the teacher self. And while I think we have generally proven that we're able to do in-person learning now, I respect the fact that our district made the decision to prioritize health uh, during a very uh, complicated and transitional time. There were positives found in distance learning, but there were struggles found as well. When it's a virtual, you know, and they were they were home, it's kind of hard to connect with, with students, especially when they don't have their cameras on or anything else. So it makes it a lot more difficult. And if students were falling behind, it was a little more difficult to touch base with them, whereas, you know, in person, it's pretty easy, you know, to walk up and say, hey, you know, come on, we got to get this done. You know, where are you struggling with? What are you struggling with? How can I help you? What do we need to do? Virtually, it's a little more difficult because then the, the student has to take an active part in you know, scheduling time during office hours and uh, things like that. I have to have a whole different set of, of objectives for kids at home to me because in my construction tech class, we're building walls and drywalling and mudding and taping and doing electrical, you know, house wiring. Well, the kids that are virtual at home, they don't get that hands-on experience. So we have to have a whole different set of objectives for them. I think the struggle for distance learning is for everyone is just you're at home. So you're not in kind of that environment of, okay, I'm at school. I have my desk. I have all my materials. I have my resources. And for a lot of us, myself included, I didn't have a really great setup at home because of course my entire family was home. We don't have four separate office spaces for all of us to work. So, you know, I'm in a little corner in my room, my kids are in their room, my husband's in our kitchen. So it was just challenging, I think, to try and and work, do our work when we were at home. Although I think for myself and all my students, I think everyone did a great job. It's hard to know when your students are excelling, when you're looking at them in a tiny little black box, and it's hard to know when they're struggling when you're looking at them in a tiny black box. And that goes both for school and for everything that's happening in their lives outside of school. I mean, I think engagement is always, it's impossible to tell. And I think I will say my students generally played ball when I asked them to turn their cameras on. And I think that was helpful just from the human to human connection. I can only speak for myself, but as your teachers, the stuff we missed the most was interacting with our students. And so when that engagement was hard to tell or was, felt like it was lacking in some ways, that was the biggest challenge. Zoom does not permit class discussions as easily as we would like it to. It, it really unfortunately made it kind of lecture heavy with, mi with a little bit of a minimizing of the back and forth from the students. Now it is very common for a teacher to teach a class with in-person students and also students who are zooming in from home. Well, I got one virtual class, Honors uh, Intro to Engineering Design, and then I got an in-person class of Honors Intro to Engineering Design, but in that class I have three or four kids that are high school virtual, so they're zooming in every day at the same time that I'm teaching the class in person. And then I teach construction tech, which is the same thing. So right now I actually have three in-person classes, but then of course every
every day we will have a person, a student or two that are joining us via Zoom. I teach one class that's an in-person class, but even with the in-person class, we continue to offer a daily live Zoom link. I have two other classes that are virtual in person. So by design, about half of the class is physically present in the classroom and the other class every day zooms in. So this quarter, I have all in person, but I always have a handful of students who are learning from home. Before teaching students 100% online, the Parkway Central teachers had varying ranges of virtual knowledge. Now they reflect on the virtual skills they have learned as teachers and how they will implement these skills going forward in the classroom. No. No. And that was the scary part. You know, because like I said, you know, my whole career, 35 years of teaching, everything we've done has been in person, it's been hands-on. Well, basically everything was learned new. Uh, will I use any? Yes, uh, with my in-person students, some of the stuff that we did technologically wise, you know, as far as uh, submitting assignments electronically and things like that, where before it was paper. Uh, I do a lot more now of, of kids submitting work electronically, electronic portfolios, things like that, which I really hadn't done in the past, but uh, I will in the future. The advantage, I guess, of being a, a business teacher and teaching a lot of technology classes is that for me, luckily, I already had all my classes set up on Schoology. I had never really used Zoom or Google Meet, but that wasn't a huge learning curve, I think just because I'm used to dealing with different technology platforms. Also, I really just tried to stick with things that I know worked in person and tried to convert them to an online format and that seemed to work really well for me. A couple websites here and there or even a couple websites that I had heard about but I really just had not had the time to explore them. Um, definitely last spring we had professional development days where we had time to go to trainings and learn the different websites and that was that was really fun and helpful. WeVideo was a website I'd always wanted to use that I really hadn't and I started to use that and it's something that I ended up really liking. So I think I was using a lot of online tools where it made sense, but I definitely would continue to use some online tools. I don't know if I knew how to do anything virtually before online instruction. I'm definitely going to continue to use some of these different technological tools. You know, in a way, it, it makes it easier for everybody. If somebody's at a doctor's appointment and it's going to be a struggle to get back to school, but they can get back to home, they're able to catch the last little bit through our Zoom or the recording of it. Not really. I I'm a little bit old school and I always said I could teach by candlelight with a chalkboard and a piece of paper if I had to. I had certainly used Google Classroom in the last, you know, in the preceding few years and I found that generally helpful as a way to keep track of, track of stuff and that really transitioned nicely uh, in the last year. I certainly had to learn to use Schoology and that was something admittedly I had like delayed learning and I just frankly didn't care that much about and so it made me learn Schoology which you know has some benefits it has some frustrations uh, and certainly made me a much more of an expert at Google Classroom and I think the Google suite of tools that they use but I will say that those are helpful tools uh, beyond that I don't know that there are m many more that I used you know aside from obviously Zoom I still use Schoology every day to put up my daily plan um, I use Google Classroom for pretty much everything else, and for security's sake and safety's sake, um, I don't hand out papers anymore, at least this quarter and next quarter. I'm planning just on using Google Docs for that, and that has the added benefit of saving some trees, I think, but also um, I don't know that there's a real need right now for me to be touching students' papers and students to be touching papers <laughs> that I give them. Uh, I will be ready to shut Zoom down for good when it's safe. I'm not going to miss Zoom when it's done, but if I have to use it, it's, it's not the end of the world, and it has some useful tools for sure. The teachers comment on if they would teach virtually next year if given the option. I would be happy to teach virtually next year if given the option. I would be happy to teach in a classroom next year if given the option. I would prefer to teach in person. Obviously, I mean, I prefer to teach in person because I'm I, that's the type of person I am. I, you know, I like the back and forth of being in the classroom with the students and, and seeing everyone. But obviously, if I, if I was asked to teach virtually, I would because whatever, whatever best for our students and our classes that we have here in the business department, I'd be willing to do that for sure. I think that this has been a really challenging year for students and teachers. But at the end of the day, we all have this amazing opportunity in front of us to learn and to teach. And whether that's virtually or in person or on the moon, I think that we're all going to continue to be excited to do that. This has been Corrine Heller reporting for PCH-TV.